Thank you. Okay. So again, good evening everyone. So kung saan sulok man kayo ng ano ngayon. So again, so tuloy pa rin yung klase natin. So ayan. Then pagbalik ko ng Jensen class. So pagbalik ko sa ano, pag-uwi ko. So tuloy-tuloy na yung lecture natin. So of course, kahit saan man ako, tuloy-tuloy pa rin yung lecture natin. Class. Para uh, November, tapos na natin lahat ng area. Para after that, every uh, meeting natin ng December and November, magkakaroon tayo ng mga rationalization. Okay. So more on, mag-focus na tayo sa mga Q&A. Okay? So of course, ang subject natin uh, tonight, class, is the introduction to uh, the criminal justice system or the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay? Bakit na paano ko yun? I-mute ko na lang kayo, class, ha, kasi uh, nakaka-distract sa iba. Okay, so pag sinabi natin introduction to the Philippine criminal justice system, I'm sure you are familiar with the uh, introduction to uh, CGS. Okay, so ano natin class? So yan yung subject natin mamaya. Okay, so ito class, yung mga seven biggest brain damaging habits na na-explain ko na yan sa inyo. Then of course, natapos na rin yan. So how to improve memory on uh, our, ating, uh, yung ating uh, ano class. Okay, so our past uh, discussion. Okay, so uh, dito kayo class. So 10 pa lang yung participants natin. So please uh, take note of this, yung tinatawag natin na method so answering CLE question. So take note class, it is a method. So meaning, hindi ka dapat pumunta sa number 3 kung hindi mo pa natapos yung number 1. Kaya nga tinawag na methods. So kapag methods, ibig sabihin in order yung class. So of course, number 1 class na dapat ninyong malaman. Okay, so dapat ha. Uh, as we go on with our discussion, dapat ma-apply nyo na to. Of course, number one, read the question twice. Okay, please make sure ah, na binasa ninyo yung question twice or as or gusto nyo masigurado, thrice or ten times. Kasi nga, every area naman supporting some that is uh, composed of uh, three hours. Okay, so yung uh, sasagutan yung mga tanong dyan. So read the question twice. Then, uh, second class, think twice. Mag-pause ka muna. Okay? Mag-pause ka muna. Huwag ka muna mag rush sa pagsagot. Pag-isipan mo muna. Internalize mo muna kung ano yung magiging possible answer to that question. Then third, answer once. It is very important class na sumagot ka or yung tinatawag natin na answer once. So meaning that dito sa answer once class, do not change or erase your answer. Kaya di ba palagi kong sinasabi kasi it will be marked wrong anyway. So do not change ha, huwag mong palitan yung sagot mo. So dapat as much as possible, walang eraser yung papel, yung lapis mo dyan class. Okay? Kapag sumasagot ka. Then of course class, halimbawa, nagkataon na wala ka talagang idea sa binasa mo or wala kang idea sa question na binato sa board exam, ito yung trick natin dyan. If you don't know the answer, then know how to answer. So again, ha, if you don't know the answer, then know how to answer. Kapag halimbawa, hindi ko na-discuss yan or hindi na-discuss ng mga lecturers ninyo yung topics na yan, then lumabas sa board exam. So if you don't know the answer class, then know how to answer. So ano yung gagawin namin, sir, kapag uh, ganon kapag wala kaming idea, hindi na basa, hindi na na-discuss ng lecturer, hindi talaga namin na encounter at all. So if you don't know the answer, then know how to answer. Ang gagawin yung class, you will apply the process of elimination. Pag sinabi natin process of elimination class, take note, ang process of elimination, ibig sabihin, i-eliminate mo ngayon yung mga, mga terms, mga topics na you are familiar Okay? You are familiar with the topics, you are familiar with the term. So in that way class, malalaman mo ngayon kung ano yung i-eliminate mo dyan sa given uh, set of questions. Okay? Set of choices rather. Again, ulitin ko. Kahit ito lang yung matanda nyo sa akin class sa board exam, okay na yun. Yung methods of answering CL question, number one, read twice the question. And of course, read the suggested answer as well from A, B, A, B, C, and B. Think twice. Then again, ang pinaka-importante dyan, class, answer once. Very important yung mga answer once kasi, class, ang mag-check ng, uh, ng papel ninyo is the machine. So, dapat answer once. So, meaning, do not change or erase your answer. Kasi nga, it will be marked wrong anyway. Then, of course, if you don't know the answer or any instances na hindi nyo alam yung sagot, hindi nyo na-encounter at all, 
then know how to answer. So, ang i-apply mo dyan is the process of elimination. Okay, so eliminate mo yon yung mga choices na you are familiar with. But of course, yung natira doon, baka yun yung possible answer. Nakuha ba ninyo? Nakuha ba? Yes, sir. Okay, so dapat ha, i-take note yung class so para yan yung magiging guide ninyo as we go on with our discussion. Okay. Okay, so dito tayo class, so please make sure or please uh, make use ng ating uh, comment section. So 17 pa lang tayo ngayon. So baka merong uh, klase or merong trabaho yung iba. Okay, so yung uh, recording lang yung babalikan nila. So ang question natin class, X within 10 killed Y. So what crime is committed by the former? Again, X within 10 killed Y. What crime is committed by the former? Pag sinabi natin former class, ibig sabihin yung first na nabanggit sa napangalan sa question. Ang latter naman, yung last na nabanggit na pangalan sa question. Letter A, murder. Letter B, homicide. Letter C, parricide. And letter D, infanticide. Okay, please give your answer in the comment section class. Actually, this is just a pre preliminary to check kung uh, okay pa ba yung pag-iisip na yun. Okay, sige. Uh, I will check yung uh, sagot ninyo. Homicide and so on. Okay, so okay, majority of you got the correct answer. So, ang sagot natin dyan, class, of course, hindi sabihin, isudyante ko talaga kayo. So, ang sagot natin dyan, that is homicide. Okay, that is letter B, class. So, again, tandaan nyo, ha, ang distinction between murder and homicide, ang murder with the attendant of the different uh, circumstances na enumerated under Article 248 ng revised penal code natin. While ang homicide naman, of course, that is the killing of person without the attendant of the different circumstances of murder. So, may sumagot ba ng murder? Wala naman. Okay, very good. So, ang sagot natin dyan, that is what we call the homicide. Okay, so that is letter B. Okay, let's move on dito. Okay, so diba, ito yung tinatawag natin na TOS na actually na-explain ko na yan sa inyo. So, ang uh, CGS class only five questions or possible question lang yung lalabas dyan. So, of course, gagawin natin or gagamitin natin yung uh, summary type ng discussion natin. Kasi actually, five possible questions. But then again, please make sure na madaanan din natin to. Of course, sa uh, human rights class, merong possible five questions sa uh, book 1, uh, 20, uh, 20, sa book 2, 35, sa evidence 17, and of course, yung criminal procedure and testimony 18. Of course, there is total of 100 questions. So, ito yung mga topics na meron tayo dito, class. Okay, next. Of course, ang dapat natin ma-explain dyan, class, under the criminal justice system. Okay, so uh, are you familiar? Okay, so actually, class, wala na yung tinatawag natin ngayon na pillars of the criminal justice system. Ang pumalit na dyan is yung tinatawag natin, class, na... Okay, components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay, hindi, hindi maganda yung lighting natin dito. Okay, so ayan. So, i-off ko na lang yung camera. Okay, so again class, tandaan ninyo na hindi na tayo gumagamit ng term na pillars of the Philippine criminal justice system. Ang ginagamit na natin ngayon is the component of the Philippine criminal justice system. Kaya, again class, ah, uh, kailan nyo nalaman, class, na napalitan na pala yung uh, pillar sa term na component? Kailan lang? Pag i-comment lang. Ngayon lang, sir. Ay, ngayon lang. Patay. Okay. So, ayan, class. So, actually, class, ang uh, pillars, sa, sa inyo lang po, sir. Patay. Okay. So, actually, ang pillars, class, that is, uh, was changed two years ago. Dati nung nagmamastral ako sa University of Baguio, uh, bakit na natutawa ko? Okay, nung nagmasara ako sa University of Baguio, doon ko nalaman, ah, na-change na pala ang pillars. Okay, so nanonood ng live mo sa FB, sir. Okay, so ah, ayan. So kaya ngayon, uh, yung uh, mga estudyante, nung nakita nila o napanood nila yung uh, video ko sa class or yung, yung mga live ko, 
every time na may mag-lecture sa nila or may lecture or may speaker or may instructor sila na sinasabi pa rin ni Spillar, skin correct nila. Tapos sabi nila sinabi ni Coach Ray dyan, ganito. Then of course, pinakita nyo, sabi ko ipakita nyo yung POS sa kanila kung hindi sila maniwala. Of course, di ba? Nakalagay dyan sa number 2 sa uh, uh, subtopics na dapat ma-explain under the Philippine Criminal Justice System. Okay, of course, kailangan natin i-explain class what is arrest, detention, human rights, uh, investigation, inquest, prosecution, trial, judgment, and appeal. So in that way, ang nakaserve or yung ating discussion class, nakapokus talaga yan sa TOS. Kasi nga, uh, I am an advocate Okay, uh, I am an advocate class of uh, TOS. Kaya di ba yung mga, mga deans and other mga lecturers, hindi na alam kung saan kukuha ng TOS. Pero sa akin, for free lang yan, yung makita nyo sa Facebook. So kasi nga, lahat ng uh, lecture ko class, pinipresent ko muna ang TOS para makita ng students na nakapattern pala yung discussion research sa TOS. So meaning, uh, siguradong sigurado na lalabas yan sa board exam. Kaya na, natatawa ako ka every time na kakalabas ng board exam, Sir, grabe yung mga tanuturo mo. Doon talaga lahat ang uh, kinukuha yung mga tanong. Siya, sabi ko, kabahan kayo kapag lalabas yan sa nursing board exam. di ba Kaya nga tinuturo ko yan kasi yan naman talaga ang coverage ng examination ninyo. So ganun class. Second class, explain the process of filing criminal cases. From police to courts and the rights of the victim and the accused. Okay, mamaya, explain ko kung ano yung mga rights nila. Nakalakay dyan third, yung, ito yung kaso, yung third. Okay, yung ginawan ko ng video. Illustrate the interplay and the roles of the components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Actually class, yung mga ibang lecturer and speaker, mga instructor class, they are not updated with the current uh, trends. Actually class yung mga mga books na bago nakakalabas ang components na ang ginamit doon. Okay, yung kakalabas na ano components na ang ginamit doon class. Hindi na ginagamit yung term na pillar. And of course the last board exam, tinanong ko yung mga students ko kung ano yung ginamit nila or anong ginamit sa tanong. Ang ginamit daw components na. Wala na silang na-encounter na pillars kasi nga of course sa TOS illustrate the interplay and roles of the components of the Philippine Criminal Justice System or the PCGS. Okay. Uh, mamaya class, ipopost ko sa Facebook or ibibigay ko sa inyo sa GC natin okay, yung uh, legal source. Kasi maraming nagtatanong sa akin, mga professionals, mga students magta-take ng board exam, kung meron ba daw frustrated arson. Okay. So nahanap ko na yung legal source natin class. Okay. Meron po talagang frustrated arson. So mamaya... Of course, if, uh, ano ko yan, uh, ipasa ko pa sa mga lawyers uh, yung sa GC namin para ma-check, of course. Okay. So, uh, then of course, discuss the modes of the criminal justice system including the legally organized justice system for cultural minorities, yung mga IPs and so on. So, yan yung mga coverage natin ng ating, uh, ano, ating discussion tonight. So, bakit may nagsumusulat na iba? Wait lang, uh, eh, ano ko... Uh, hmm. uh, dito siguro sa security na mm -hmm. annotate rename a new share whiteboards in there okay so para ako lang yung makasulat dito okay sige let's move on okay so Okay, uh, in this question class, so isasagutin natin yan. Okay, so it is an act and omissions punishable by law. Letter A, felonies. Letter B, crime. Letter C, offense. And letter D, infraction. Okay, please make use of our uh, group chat, or our uh, comment section rather. Again, it is an act and omissions punishable by law. Walang magkakamali dito ha. Okay, so ayan. Marami, may nagkamali talaga kasi iba-iba yung sagot ninyo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Out of 34, so ang daming nagkamali ah. Felonies, felonies. <laughs> okay, so ang sagot natin dyan class, an acts and omissions punishable by law. Okay, ang sagot natin dyan class, hindi crime ah. Ang sagot natin dyan, that is felonies. Again, Okay, so wag kayong mag-react. Okay? Kasi uh, actually dyan ako nag-start class. Yan yung in-explain ko nung muna. Okay? So ang sagot natin dyan, acts and omissions punishable by law are 
felony. Saan natin kinuha ang sagot natin, class? Okay, saan natin kinuha ang sagot? Okay, dito, class, sa Article 3 of the Revised Penal Code. Okay, dyan natin kinuha yan. So, we have the Article 3 of the Revised Penal Code, yung definition ng tinatawag natin na felonies. Nakalagay dyan, acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies. Again, ulitin ko, under Article 3 of the Revised Penal Code, and acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies or yung tinatawag natin na delitos. Meron ba niyang nakalagay, acts and omissions punishable by law are crime? Meron ba? Wala. Meron? Meron ba class? Wala. Wala, wala sir. Wala. O, di ba? Wala. O, di ba? Bakit sinagot niyo? Bakit sinagot niyo ang crime? So, ganun class ang dangerous ang uh, board exam. Kaya kapag uh, ano ka sa, wag, uh, kaya sinasabi ko, wag kayo manood sa mga yung mga nagpo-content ng estudyante, nagpo-content ng mga ano yun, iba-iba yung mga ini-explain, ini, uh, translate in Filipino, bawal na bawal yun class pagdating sa board exam. Okay? Nakabase tayo sa batas natin, nakabase tayo sa codal ka sa, kung ano yung sinabi ng batas, kung ano yung sinabi ng codal, yun yung ating basis. Again, acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies. So dapat ha, after this our conversation or our meeting, dapat marami kayong nakuha sa akin, di ba? Bago pa lang yan, no? akala ko okay na yan, settled na yan. Pero again, kailangan pa natin i-correct pala or kailangan pa natin uh, i-check. Okay, kasi keyword ko sir sa felonies. Okay. Tama naman yung keyword niyo na against RPC kasi that is another uh, definition of felonies. Of course, uh, pag sinabi natin felonies, it is an acts and omissions punishable also by RPC or the Revised Penal Code. Pero ang pinaka-meaning talaga ng felonies class ito, Article 3 of the Revised Penal Code. It is an acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies. Okay? So yan class. So huwag niyong baguhin ha kasi... Tinignan ko yung notes rin ni Judge, eh, yung for bar bar exam. Nakalagay doon, acts and omissions punishable by law or felonies. Yung definition niya. Sabi ko, bakit kaya yung mga abogado, very specific sila, hindi nila pinapalitan. Bakit kapag yung mag-explain, yung mga criminologist, yung mga art cream, pinapalitan nila. Dinadagdagan, binabawasan. So bawal yun kasi, kaya di ba maraming... Uh, Abin uh, give black ako ng mga content creators. <laughs> okay, yeah, give black nila ako na sa mga ng mga content creators kasi kasi nga kino correct ko yung mga ano nila, yung mga content nila. So wala silang magagawa kasi naka-base ako sa batas kasi sila own opinion. So kaya na again, ang board exam is not based on opinion, naka-base 'yan sa batas. I hope it's clear. Okay, explain natin class further. Of course, class, ang felonies, tama yung sinabi ni uh, ano kanina, sino yun? Si, um, uh, sino yun? Uh, basahin ko. <laughs> okay, so ang uh, felonies class, it is the specific crime punishable by the revised penal code. Again, tama pa rin yun. Aside sa definition ng felonies under Article 3, dinedefine rin natin ang felonies na it is the specific crime class punishable under the revised penal code. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na felonies. Okay, let's move forward. Okay. Answer this sub-question class para makita ninyo kung bakit mali yung sagot ninyo ng una. Okay, another question. It is an act and omissions in violation... Sorry. In violations of public law... Kita. Forbidding or commanding it. Again... It is an act and omissions in violation of public law for bidding or commanding it. What is your answer? Okay, so crime na yan. Okay. Okay, so sige. So bagot kayo, class, para malaman natin. Okay, so lahat ha, sumagot na. 37 na pala tayo. Okay, sige. 
Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, tama kayo. So that is crime na. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan is crime. Please make sure class na naka-off yung microphone ninyo para smooth lang yung discussion natin para pasok lahat sa utak ninyo yung dinidiscuss ko dito. So ang sagot na natin dyan class is crime. Again, pag sinabi natin crime, it is an act on a mission in violation of public law or yung tinatawag natin na penal law of the state or yung batas ng ng state or ng government natin commanding or forbidding or commanding it. So that is crime. Okay? Crime na. Of course, class, sinamari ko dyan on the next slide para makita ninyo kung ano talaga. Okay? Pag sinamari natin crime class, it is an act and omissions in violation of any law. Nakalagay dyan. Any law. Okay? So any law kasi class kasi generic term ang crime class. Pwede mong gamitin siya sa lahat. So kapag na-violate mo is the revised penal code, Kapag na-violate mo is special penal laws or yung na-violate mo is the municipal and city ordinance, pwede mo gamitin talaga class or safe to use yung term or yung legal term na crime. So that's why it is uh, in violation of any law, whether it is a uh, revised penal code, whether it is special law or whether it is uh, municipal or city ordinance. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba? Yes sir, yes sir. Okay, sige, next. Pag sinabi naman natin riba, pag sinabi naman natin felony class, of course, aside sa Article 3 ng Revised Penal Code na definition ng felonies, di ba? It is an act and omissions in violation of law, of course, that is felony. Pag sinabi natin, of course, felony, of course, aside from that, it is in violation of the Revised Penal Code or the RPC or yung tinatawag natin na ano yung another term ng, ng ano class? ng revised penal code class. Nagsistart sa letter G. Okay? So, ano yung other term ng revised penal code? Or the... Uh, ano yan, class? Ano yung uh, term na tawag natin doon? Okay, very good. So, ang galing talaga kasi estudyante ko talaga kayo. So, sa ibang ano yan, class, hindi na nila alam. So, of course, yan yung tanatawag natin na general law. Okay? General law ang tawag natin dyan, class. Okay. So saan nyo yan nalaman yung general law class? Naturo na ba yan sa inyo ng college kayo or hindi? Sa'yo lang po sir. Ay sa akin lang patay. Ngayon pa lang sir. Ngayon pa lang. Patay. Hindi ko lang alam. Ay ngayon lang alam. So ayan, mas mabuti or mas okay na alam nyo na. So ayan. So felony or yung IRPC or the general law. Okay. Sige. So pag sinabi naman natin na... Sinabi naman nating offense class, of course, that is the special law, okay? In violation of the special law. So ano yung mga tinatawag natin na special law? Of course, we have the Republic Acts. Halimbawa, yung Republic Act 9165, that is special law. Pag sinabi naman nating uh, presidential decrees, of course, that is also a special law. As yung mga any laws class na outside of the revised penal code, na hindi kasali doon sa revised penal code, tinatawag natin yan class na ano na offense or yung tanatawag natin na offenses. Okay. Then of course, pag sinabi natin, okay, bakit tayo? Pag sinabi naman natin in fraction class, of course, that is uh, in violation of the city or municipal ordinance. Okay, yung mga city or municipal ordinance, kapag na-violate mo yung class, ang tawag doon is in fraction of law. Okay, ang example niyan or the classical or the best example for Uh, infraction class of crimes is yung tinatawag natin na curfew hours. Okay, kapag na-violate mo yung curfew, then take note class ang curfew that is a status uh, crime or the status offense. So meaning, when it is committed by minors, that is punishable. Kung ang nakakommit nito class are minors, binibigyan niya ng penalty or punishment ng government or ng state natin or ng city or municipality. Once naman, kapag na-commit or halimbawa kayo na adult na, na-commit ninyo or na-violate ninyo ang curfew, hindi kayo bibigyan ng punishment. Kasi nga, that is also, uh, that is considered as a status crime or as a status offense. It only punishes class yung tinatawag natin ng minors. Kasi nga, yung uh, batas na yan, that is only intended for them. Sa atin, hindi yan pwede mag-book effect. Kasi ang curfew again, it is a status offense or a status crime. Again, pag sinabi natin crime, that is in violation of any law, whether na violate mo class is RPC, special law, or the city or municipal ordinance, ang safe mo na gamitin is the crime. Kasi of course, ang crime, that is an act and omission but in violation of public law or the penal law of the state. Pag sinabi naman natin felony, 
that is an act and omission is uh, punishable by law. Of course, that is felony. Then, of course, it is uh, specifically in violation of the revised you know, code or the general law. Then, of course, ang offense naman, of course, kapag na-violate mo is the special law, whether it is uh, republic acts or mga presidential decrees and so on, ang sagot natin, or ang, ang term na tawag natin dyan, guys, is offense. Then, of course, ang infraction, kapag yung na-violate mo yung city or municipal ordinance, so that is infraction of law. Okay. So, ano ba? Sampu yung lumabas dyan. So, dapat uh, wala kayong reason na. Wala kayong reason na magkamali kayo dyan. Kaya si pinaulit-ulit ko na yan. So, I hope clear na. Okay na ba? Yes, sir. Okay. Sige. Next. Okay. So, proceed yes, na tayo class sa uh, CGS versus PCGS. Tandaan niyo, of course, we have the criminal justice system and the Philippine criminal justice system. Ang tanda nyo lang class, pag sinamay natin criminal justice system, it is the machinery or yung tinatawag natin na tool na ginagamit in prevention and control of crime. Again ha, pag sinamay natin CGS, it is the machinery or tool used in prevention and control of crime. Yan yung tinatawag natin na CGS. Pag tinawag, man, pag tinawag naman natin na PCGS, of course that is uh, what we call the uh, okay magkaiba naman yan class of course that is the machinery used by the philippine government in prevention and control of crime okay so yan yung tinatawag natin na pc uh, gs okay so i hope it's clear ah ang uh, kaibahan ng nila class take note ang uh, cgs of course that is uh, what it call the uh, prevention and control of crime pero sa philippine criminal justice system ang uh, ang nag-iba lang diyan yung uh, used by the Philippine government in prevention and control of crime. So naspot niyo class ang ano? Naspot niyo yung uh, tinatawag natin na um, kaibahan nila. Okay, ganun yes, lang. Okay, yun lang yung kaibahan nila class used by the Philippine government that is the PCGS. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Okay, next tayo. Okay, so dito tayo. So among all the components of the Philippine criminal justice system, it stands as the cornerstone of the system. So again, under or among all the components of the Philippine criminal justice system, it stands as the cornerstone of the system. Mm -hmm. So again. Okay, please make sure class ano naka-off yung microphone niya. Okay, sige, I will check it kung tama. Okay. Bakit may gumagamit pa ng pillar class? Wala nang pillar ngayon. Okay, so ayan. So ang sagot ay... Hmm. Sige, ang sagot natin dyan, class, okay? Sinabi niya, it serves or it stands as the cornerstone. So meaning, it serves as the uh, foundation, okay? Yung tinatawag natin na center of the order of the system. So dati, class, ang sagot natin dyan is court. Pero ngayon, kasi nadagdagan or nandyan na si uh, community. So that's why ang sagot na natin yan ngayon class is the community. Okay? And of the, or, uh, the, uh, the old curriculum, of course, ang sagot dyan is the court. Pero ngayon class, kasi nandyan na si community as the added component or the unique component of our Philippine criminal justice system, that's why ang community na class is considered as the cornerstone of the system. So community ang sagot natin. Okay, nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba class? Okay. Okay, so pag, kasi itinawag natin class na cornerstone or the foundation yung community kasi nga uh, saan ba nang kukumit ng crime ang uh, yung individual na yon? Of course sa community. Then of course yung ating uh, ano, 
uh, saan siya babalik after niya ma-serve ang sentence still sa community. That's why it is considered as the cornerstone, the center, or the foundation of all components under the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay, so yan. Next. Okay, so the original component class of the justice system are the following except, again, the original component, okay? So again, the original components of the Philippine criminal, ay, the criminal justice system are the following except, please make sure kasi na nakopya yung mic nyo, nag echo kasi. Uh, letter A, court. Letter B, prosecution. Letter C, law enforcement. And letter D, correction. Okay, so again, the original components of the Philippine criminal justice system are the following except. Okay, so lahat sumagot, class. Lahat sumagot. Okay, so yan. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, of course, that is US is only three components of CGS. Okay, so yan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so of course, very good class. Majority of you got the correct answer. So tanda ninyo class, sa US class, kung saan nag-originate yung ating criminal justice system, meron na silang tatlo. Ang tanda nyo na acronym dyan class is the LCC. So yung L, that stands for law enforcement. Yung C naman, that stands for uh, court. And of course, we have the, they have the correction. So again, ang original component kung saan nag-originate ang ating criminal justice system that is only composed of the three components. Or sa kanila pa rin class, pwede nilang tawagin na pillars kasi sa atin lang naman, strictly na hindi natin pwedeng tawagin na pillars kasi napalitan na sa kanila class sa US pwede nang tawagin pillars pa rin or components okay so i hope it's clear ah so again class ang original components nila is the law enforcement courts and correction wala na silang prosecution class wala na rin silang community so meron tayo lang actually yung may community so that's why ang sagot natin diyan is letter b wala nang tanong wala na ba yung violent reaction diyan Walang violent reaction so, or, or any? Sige. Okay, next tayo. So, the recital of rights of a suspect during custodial investigation. Again, the recital of rights of a suspect during custodial investigation. investigation. Letter A, Bill of Rights. Letter B, Miranda Warning. Letter C, Rights of the Accused. And letter D, Code of Ethics. Again, the recital of rights of a suspect during custodial investigation, letter A, Bill of Rights, letter B, Miranda Warning, letter C, Rights of the Accused, and letter D, Code of Ethics. Naka-mute ka yung sir. Ay. Bakit? Uh, akala ko. Kaya pala. Okay. Sabihan niyo ako, class, kapag naka-mute. Thank you. Okay. Pag sinabi natin uh, 
uh, custodial investigation class. Tandaan nyo lang yung CI. Ibig sabihin, that is the questioning. Okay? So, that is the questioning of uh, a person. Okay? Under police custody. Okay? Police parlance. Okay. Eh, sorry. Under the police parlance. So, yan class yung tanatawag natin na custodial investigation. That is the questioning of a person under police parlance. Ibig sabihin, under the police stage. So, ang tawag natin doon is uh, custodial investigation. Of course, class, ang recital of rights during uh, sa suspect. Kasi ang suspect class, ibig sabihin na sa police stage pa lang yung tao na yan. Or yung tanatawag natin ngayon as the persons of interest or the POI. So, magkakaroon tayo ng Miranda warning. Okay? Sorry. Ibig sabihin yan, class, Uh, iya uh, iya or yung i-recite niya ngayon or yung police officer yung uh, respective uh, rights ng tao na yon under the constitution of course sasabihan niya you have the right to remain silent you have uh, the right to uh, have a counsel or uh, is a competent counsel preferably with your own with your own choice and so on so yun yung mga sasabihin niya class So yan yung tinatawag natin ng Miranda Warning. Kasi nga, ang Miranda Warning class nag-originate yan sa landmark case or yung famous case ng tinatawag natin na Miranda versus Arizona in the United States. Kasi nga, hindi nung pag sa kanya class, hindi uh, na-reside yung mga constitutional rights niya, of course, as vested with the Constitution. So yan yung tinatawag natin ng Miranda Warning the recital of rights of a suspect during custodial investigation, of course, when we are conducting an arrest. Okay, when you are an arresting officer, please make sure, uh, class, na nasabi nyo yung tanatawag natin ng Miranda warnings. Okay, kasi nga, kapag hindi mo yan nasabi, class, kapag hindi mo yan na-execute, it will tantamount to the dismissal of the case. Okay? I-dismiss ang kaso, class. Wala kang magagawa. Kasi nga, Uh, that is a constitutional right na ma-inform siya whatever or kung ano yung mga rights niya under the Constitution. So that is Miranda warning. Okay? Kasi pag sinabi naman natin Bill of Rights, class, yung letter A, pag sinabi natin Bill of Rights, those are the uh, the set of rights of an individual. Okay? That is the, those are the set of rights of an individual na makikita natin sa Constitution natin or the 1987 Constitution under the Article 3 Bill of Rights of the 1987 Constitution. So, those are the set of rights class na binigay sa atin ng Constitution. So, that's why ang tawag natin dyan is the Bill of Rights. Okay, dito naman tayo ngayon class sa Code of Ethics. Okay, ang Code of Ethics class, of course, yun yung mga, yun yung tanatawag natin na those and those or yung mga dapat i-portray ng isang public officer or employee kasi di ba uh, kapag public officer or employee ka class dapat meron tayong tinatawag under the constitution public office is a public trust okay so public office is a public trust so dapat of course sa uh, employee ka class okay employee ka lang ng government so meaning ang boss mo yung tao okay Ta tayo Okay, so yung mga, di ba, kung napapansin nyo yung mga government employee, ang sasama ng ugali. Okay, so lang. Okay, kapag uh, i-approach mo sila, uh, parang ayaw nila maki, ano, ayaw man nilang kausapin, class. Kasi nga, yung iba, um, ano yun, parang uh, hindi na nakalimutan nila yung sinabi ng Constitution that public office is a public trust. Tayo yung naglok-lok sa kanila dyan. Kung wala tayo, of course, wala rin sila sa posisyon nila. So, yan. Okay, so dito tayo ngayon class sa rights of the accused. Ano yung pinaka-first na right of the accused class? Actually, na-explain ko na yan sa video. So what is the first or the primary right of the accused? Okay, so what is the primary rights of the accused? Please answer on the comment section. Remain innocent. Ano yung mga sagot nyo, class? Bakit iba-iba yung mga sagot ninyo? Bakit hindi pa settled? Any question? Again, what is the primary right of the accused? So, meaning ang tao na yun, class, is under the uh, trial and hearing sa korte na siya, class. So, marami nagkakamali sa, na sumagot yan. 
Okay, so what is the primary right of the accused? Okay, so tandaan nyo class, ang primary rights of the accused class. Bakit may the right to remain silent? Okay, so ang primary rights of the accused class, that is the presumption, presum, presumption of innocence. Tama ba yung spelling po? Okay, that is the presumption of innocence. So ang presumption of innocence class, of course, uh, or to be presumed innocent until proven guilty by the court of law, that is the primary right or the first right of the accused. Kasi again, pag sinabi natin accused, the person is under or uh, during sa trial and hearing. Nasa korte na siya class. So meaning, ang first niya na, or the primary right ng accused natin, kahit sabihin natin na uh, nasaksihan natin or uh, tayo mismo ang naka-witness na siya ang gumawa ng krimen eh, but still, then again, Okay, wala tayong karapatan class. Under the eyes of law, he is still presumed innocent until prove, uh, proven guilty by the court of law or under uh, until the uh, contrary will prove. So that is the presumption of innocence. Okay, so wag kayong magsulat class. Bakit may nagsusulat sa ano natin? Uh -huh. uh, Sana yun? Uh, share whiteboards. Uh, sige na lang. Uh, after na lang ng ano natin mamaya. So how about naman class? Ano yung pinaka primary right ng suspect natin? Ano yung pinaka first naman na right ng suspect? Oh, tingnan ko kung may magkamali pa diyan. Okay. So that is very good. Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan, that is the right to remain silent. Okay, the right to remain silent, that is what we call the right to remain silent. Okay, the right to remain silent class, that is the primary rights ngayon. Sorry, ng tinatawag natin na, uh, ang tinatawag natin class na suspect. Or yung uh, tinatawag na natin na POI or the persons of interest. Again, so, meron siyang karapatang manihime kasi everything he said will be used against him in the court of law. Ulitin ko, the primary rights of the accused, so meaning na sa korte na yan, meron siyang right to, okay, so that is the right to be presumed innocence or, to, or yung tinatawag natin class, the presumption of innocence until proven guilty by the court of law. Pag sinabi naman natin the primary right of the suspect or the persons of interest, that is the right to remain silent until the contrary will prove its uh, course, yung guilt niya. Nakuha ninyo? Nakuha ba? Naintindihan? Okay, so ayan. Yes, very okay, very yes, good. So I, I hope, uh, ano, okay, settle na tayo dyan, ah, so wala nang magkakaroon dyan. Okay, next tayo. Okay, of course class, pag sinabi nito yung Bill of Rights, those are the set of rights of individual na sabi ko na kanina. Pag sinabi naman natin Code of Ethics, that is under Republic Act 6713 class, pwede yung i-download yan sa low field. Okay, that is 6713, that is the Code of Ethics and Ethical Standards for Professionals. Okay, so dapat yan yung uh, i-observe nila class. Of course, habang, uh, okay, they exercise their functions as a uh, government uh, employee or government professional. Okay, so that is the code of ethics. Nakuha ba? Okay, so ayan, the code of ethics. Okay, dito naman tayo class. The Supreme Court must decide on matters or case within the following period from the date of submission. So mamaya, after our discussion, pwede yung balikan ulit yung ating uh, ano dito, yung ating um, discussion. Okay, kasi isusend pa rin yung ating recording. So again, the Supreme Court must decide on matters or case within the following period from the date of submission. Letter A, 24 months. Uh, letter B, 12 months. Letter C, 3 months. And letter D, 180 days. Okay, you can start answering on our comment section. Okay, lahat sumagot yung 36.
Okay, sige. How about others? Wala pang sumasagot na iba? Nice one. Okay, so let's uh, answer this one. Okay, so 180 days. Okay, ang sagot ng class, that is 24 months, letter A. Okay, so binibigyan ang Supreme Court class ng 24 months, so meaning 2 years. Within that 2 years class, ibig sabihin makapagbigay na sila ng decision nila or yung sa kaso na nire-review nila. So within 24 months class, ang Supreme Court must decide cases or matters in the following or within the following period of 24 months. Nakuha ninyo? Again na, kasi Supreme Court yan class. So meaning, bibigyan niya sila, hindi sila basta-basta kasi sila yung final arbiter. Sila yung last na mag kung ano yung magiging kahihinatnan or ano yung magiging desisyon na kanyang kaso. Kasi sila, hindi kasi last na kasi ang Supreme Court. Eh. Wala namang kasunod sa Supreme Court. So binibigyan sila ng Constitution natin class ng 24 months to settle or to decide on matters or case within the following period of 24 months. Nakuha ninyo? Nakuha ninyo, class? So bakit 180 days, class? Ang 180 days that is intended Okay, so ang 180 days class, that is intended class sa tinatawag natin class na trial period. Okay, dito in the next slide, explain natin. Ang 12 months class, of course, uh, yan yung binigay sa mga all lower collegiate court to uh, settle or to decide cases. Ang ano naman, ang uh, all lower courts, 3 months. Of course, class, ang uh, trial period na tinatawag natin class, and of course, that is 180 days. Kapag sumobra sa 180 days class, ibig sabihin, yan yung uh, legal maxims natin. Diyan na matatransfer or dyan na ngayon papasok yung legal maxims natin. Okay? So, uh, yun yung tanatawag natin na justice delayed is justice, uh, justice denied. So, kasi nga, sumobra na yung tanatawag natin na trial days period. So, dapat 100, eh, within 180 days, na-dispose na yung kaso. Meaning, may verdict na yung korte meron na siyang kanatawag natin ng judgment or adjudication by the court. So again, binibigyan ng 24 months ang SC or the Supreme Court to settle cases or matters within 24 months. Nakuha niyo? Okay. Okay, so ayan. So yan yung tanatawag natin. Of course, yung mga collegiate court class. Okay, so aside sa tanatawag natin na uh, Supreme Court, yung mga collegiate court, ano ba yung uh, Court of Appeals? Okay, so meron siyang 12, uh, 12 months to settle or to decide cases. Yan yung mga collegiate court class. Okay, so yung nag-conduct ng appeal or sandigan bayan. Kasi diba, kapag uh, natalo ka sa ano, sa tinatawag na na RTC about kapag yung sa salary grade papasok yan sa sandigan bayan. So yun yung mga lower collegiate court class. So bibigyan sila ng 12 months to settle yung mga kaso or appeal na nandoon sa kanilang opisina. Then of course ang pinaka-importante dyan class, tandaan nyo lang yung uh, okay, so tama yan. Okay. So tandaan nyo lang class, ang 180 days, uh, of course madidiscuss natin yan sa criminal procedure. Okay, so yung uh, ilan ilang days yung pagkandak ng trial and hearing. So don't worry, madadaan na natin yan sa criminal procedure kasi dapat kaya kasi mag-focus ako rin sa inyo sa criminal procedure kasi madugo rin yung kanatawag natin na criminal procedure or crime pro. Pero kapag na ano yung class natapos yung discussion ko, ganoon lang pala kasi yun. Okay? So ganoon. Sige, don't worry class, mapupunta rin tayo doon. Kasi again, learning is a process. So dito tayo, so ang uh, actually class sa Amerika, ginagamit pa rin nila yung pillars but then again, may choice sila whether to use the pillars or the components. So we have the three pillars or components ng American criminal justice system. Yung sinabi ko kanina, the law enforcement, courts, and corrections. Kaya ang acronym na gagamitin nyo class is the LCC. So again, the, they have three pillars or components of the American criminal justice system. Kaya class, ang bilis ng disposition of their case 
Okay, so parang ang bilis-bilis ng pagano nila. So karon sana sa Pilipinas no, kasi uh, very ano, very uh, slow ang uh, disposition ng kaso natin dito. Paano ba uh, ang tagal bago ma-resolve yung kaso natin. So again, LCC, wala na kayong problema sa American Criminal Justice System? Wala na ba para mag-proceed tayo sa next? Okay, so okay, let's proceed now on the next slide. Okay, so the five components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Again, so we have the five components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay, of course, lima na yan, class. So, tandaan ninyo, hindi na natin ginagamit ang term na pillars. Okay, kasi hanggang ngayon lang po siya, uh, Ano ang ganyan LCC pa din po si GS sa US. Yes, walang walang pagbabago class ha? sa hanggang ngayon ang US pa rin class. Wala pa rin silang community, wala pa rin silang prosecution as is pa rin. Tayo lang naman sa Pilipinas ang maraming pagbabago para kapag nakita natin kung ano yung maganda or ano yung bago sa ibang bansa kinakapi natin. Okay, so again, ngayon pa rin ang sa US tatlo pa rin yan sila class LCC. Okay, law enforcement, courts and correct. Okay, so yan. So we have the five components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Again, so again class, of course, alam na alam ito, number one. So of course, we have the uh, the police. Okay? So again class, ang pinaka-specific or right term talaga pagdating sa Pilipinas class is the police. Of course class, pagdating in case, okay, bakit kaya mahirap masolve sa Pilipinas? Yun yung problema na hindi talaga natin ma-explain. Okay? So, sige lang, baka after 10 years may pagbabago. Okay? Kaya sa Pilipinas, ang tagal talaga magbigay ng desisyon ng mga korte. Kasi kulang tayo sa abogado, kulang sa justices, and of course, of course sa mga resources. So, again class, so we have the five components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Ang una dyan is the police. Of course, class, common sense, pagdating sa board exam na hindi na banggit noon si police, kapag si law enforcement nandun, of course, si law enforcement ang magiging, magiging sagot ninyo. Okay? Si police or the law enforcement. Then second, kasi, kasi nga sa Pilipinas tayo, class, but it is very important na appropriate na gamitin natin is the police. Then second, of course, we have the uh, prosecution. Okay, pag sinabi natin prosecution, of course, that is the second component of the Philippine criminal justice system. Mamaya, i-explain natin yan in detail. Kasi dyan na lang naman mag i yung mga discussion natin. Of course, ang third class, yung mga courts natin. From the Supreme Court down to the Municipal Trial Court. Then third, we have the corrections. And of course, yung pinakalas natin, yung unique component ng Philippine criminal justice system is the community. Okay, so that is the added component, that is the unique component of the Philippine criminal justice system. Of course, explain natin class in detail. Okay, so tanda niyo class, pag sinabi natin five stages in the criminal justice process, but of course, may papagawa ko class sa inyo na exercise dito para matest ko kung gumagana pa yung utak ninyo. Okay, so we have the five stages in the criminal justice process of course, class, ibigay nyo ngayon yung one word na keyword ng mga process na to. Okay, so yung keyword na ginamit natin dito, ito yung ginamit mismo ng batas natin. Okay, so give me the right or appropriate uh, keyword ng ginamit ng, ano ba, ng ating uh, criminal uh, rules of court. Okay, pag sinabi natin arrest, class, what is the keyword for arrest? Okay, what is the keyword for arrest? Please uh, answer on the comment section. One word lang, class. apprehending. Okay, bakit iba-iba yung mga sagot ninyo? Okay, so of course, class, ang sagot natin dyan, pag sinabi natin arrest, class, that is the taking. Okay, so again, pag sinabi natin arrest, that is the taking. Okay, so pag sinabi natin arrest, that is the taking of person into custody of law, that he or she may be bound to answer the accusation filed against him or her. Okay, so mamaya explain pa natin ang arrest. So, ayan lang. Uh, okay na class. So, taking. So, again, class, taking. Of course, paano natin in-execute yung 
yung arrest. Tama yung sagot ni ano kanina dito. Sino yun? Um, may nabasa ako dito na connected rin sa arrest. Ah, sige, sino yun? Uh, si Pablo? Ah, hindi. Palado? Oh, hindi, wait lang. Uh, ano yung pangalan niya? Mm-hmm. Okay, so may, may nagsabi dito kanina na palad ba? Palad? Okay, actual restraint. Of course, paano natin in-execute ang, uh, yung tinatawag natin ang arrest? Of course, that is the actual restraint. Okay, so that is the actual restraint. And of course, second, of course, we have the charging. Okay, uh, then of course, uh, adjudication. Okay, so how about class? I-skip natin yung charging. So how about adjudication? What is, uh, okay, ano yung pinaka-right term ng adjudication? Palad pala. Okay. Sige, pag sinabi natin adjudication, ano yung pinaka-right term? Kasi ang adjudication class, that is the ano, that is the keyword na ginamit ng isang term. So, ibigay nyo ngayon yung term. Okay, very good. So, pag, uh, pag sinabi natin adjudication class, okay, very particular kayo, no? Pag ibig sabihin, magkaparehas na tayo ng utak. Okay. So, ang uh, judgment, of course, ang keyword niya class is adjudication. So, meaning... Uh, ang judgment, that is the adjudication of the court, whether the person is guilty or not uh, guilty of the crime. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na judgment. Okay? So, yan yung tinatawag natin na judgment. Whether the person is guilty or not guilty of a particular crime. Nakuha niyo? Okay. So, I hope uh, nakuha niyo yan. So, let's move on on the next Okay, sentencing and of course we have correction. So ayan, ulitin po class, we have the five stages in the criminal justice process. Hindi pa yung ibang kaiba ang stages class sa tinatawag natin na components of the Philippine criminal justice system. Ang uh, stages natin, of course, arrest, aristoin natin, charging, ibig sabihin sampahan ng complaint or information. Of course, uh, magkakaroon ng trial and hearing, meron adjudication ng court Titignan kung guilty siya or not guilty of a particular crime or offense. Then after that, papasok yung sentencing. Uh, sentencing, bibigyan siya ng penalty na nararapat or whatever crimes or severity na crime na nakumit niya. Papasok dyan yung sentencing. Then of course, after that, i, uh, pupunta na siya ngayon sa correction at ikukulong kung, uh, kung hindi na-approve. Halimbawa, uh, hindi na-grant yung probation. Kasi pag sinabi natin probation, he will serve the sentence in community kung saan siya nanggaling. Then kapag hindi na-approve yung probation class, alimbawa, in case na disqualified siya to apply for probation, he will serve talaga class whether he like it or not. Isiserve niya ngayon yung kanyang sentensya sa loob ng kulungan. Okay? Kasi nga diba ang tawag sa kanya ngayon is persons deprived of liberty or the PDN. Kasi nga, of course, ang uh, ano natin, ang nililimitahan natin yan, yung freedom niya class. Okay, of course, kapag nakakulong ka, wala ka talagang freedom or access sa labas. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba class? Uh, clear ba? Okay, next tayo. Okay, next. Okay, so dito tayo class sa five components of the PCGS. Okay, so five components of the PCGS kasi ito naman talaga ang highlight ng discussion natin. Isa-isahin natin class in detail kung ano ba talaga yung trabaho ng mga components natin. Of course, ang number one class, ang police class, tinatawag natin yan as the first component of the PCGS. Aside from that, tinatawag rin natin class, ang keyword na dapat nyo dyang malaman, ang police class, is the initiator or the prime mover of the criminal justice system. Again, ang police, that is the initiator or the prime mover of the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay? So, yan yung tanatawag natin na police. Or that the frontliner. Means at last, tinatawag rin ang police as the frontliner of the Philippine criminal justice system. Okay. Then of course, class, meron tayong tinatawag na examples of police initiating action. Okay? So we have the examples of police initiating action na ginagawa ng mga police natin, class. Of course, number one, effecting an arrest. Of course, they are in charge, class, to effect an arrest or yung tinatawag natin na to execute an arrest. Okay? Kasi nga, of course, uh, isa yan sa trabaho ng mga police, class, 
ways mag-aresto ng tao na yun. Of course, yung mga ano natin. Pag sinabi natin surveillance, of course, nagkakaroon sila ng surveillance. Okay, ilagay nyo nga class sa comment section ano yung one word. Sir, pag nasa choices po ba ang police and law enforcer, ano po ang pipiliin? You choose the police class. Kapag tinanong niya is sa... Uh, Uh, under the Philippine Criminal Justice System since na, sa Pilipinas tayo ang isasagot niyo si police. Kapag uh, absent yung isa, of course, uh, common sense na lang, yung isa yung ipasasagot niyo. So, wag kayong maghanap na ng ibang sagot. So, ayan, again, class, ha, kapag PCGS, isagot niyo police. Kapag CGS, law enforcement. Okay, so what is that one word, class, or what keyword na mag-define ngayon sa surveillance? Again, ilagay niyo sa comment section. Sorry, What is that one word na mag-define ngayon kay surveillance? Okay, so very good. So pag sinabi natin surveillance class, that is observation. Okay? So, observation of place, event, uh, people or person. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na uh, surveillance. So, tanda nyo guys, pag sinabi natin surveillance, that is an observation. Okay? Whether it is an observation of place, observation of person, and uh, observation of events, and so on. So, isa rin yan sa trabaho ng tinatawag natin na police. Okay? as our first component of our criminal justice system. Then, of course, uh, letter C, crime investigation. Of course, diba? So, hindi lang naman lahat ng police nasa traffic. Hindi lang naman lahat ng police nasa, nasa na tinatawag natin nasa patrol. Of course, yung uh, magagaling sa investigation. So, of course, nandun yan sila sa investigation. Okay? Investigation division. Okay? So, yan yung trabaho nila. Okay. Then of course, pag, sina, pag all participant enabled post captioning. Ano to? Okay. Sige, uh, pag sinabi natin uh, ano class, aside from that, of course, uh, prevention of crime. So, to prevent the root causes of crime. So, ibig sabihin, habang hindi pa nangyayari class, yung uh, crim criminality or yung crime na yan, pinaprevent na or dinedetermine na ng mga police officer natin class kung saan nang galing, kung ano yung root cause ng tinatawag natin na crime. So that's why it is the prevention of crime. Then we have the repression or suppression of crime. So meaning, it will reduce the opportunity of committing a crime. So ano ba yung tinatawag natin class na na triangle of crime. Kasi sa triangle of crime class, meron tayong tanatawag na pinaka-importante doon na eliminate. Of course, that is the opportunity. So ilagay nyo sa comment section nga kung ano yung tanatawag natin na triangle of crime. What is the triangle of crime? Okay. Okay, so bakit may intent? Again class, walang intent ta. Ang triangle of crime class, that is MOI. Tandaan nyo lang yung acronym natin dyan na MOI. M-O-I. So motive, opportunity, and instrumentality. Walang intent class. Again, ang triangle of crime, that is motive, opportunity, and instrumentality. Nakuha ninyo? Then of course, among the triangle of crime class, the, the most important element ng triangle of crime is yung tinatawag natin ngayon na opportunity. So paano natin ngayon, sir, mawawala or paano natin madidiminish ang opportunity? Of course, by employing police officer on the ground. Kapag visible yung uh, police officer to the eyes of the public, so pwede natin madiminish or pwede natin makuha yung tinatawag natin na opportunity for the would-be violator class or yung mga offenders to commit crime or criminality. So yan yung pinatawag natin na MOI. Motive, opportunity, and instrumentality. Okay? So take note class, kapag kulang, 
yung sa triangle of crime halimbawa uh, walang intent walang instrumentality walang uh, motive walang uh, tinatawag natin na uh, of course yung opportunity pero of course hindi mangyayari yung crime kasi nga that is a triangle of crime kapag kulang yung isa sa kanila it will not constitute or it will not uh, uh, yun yung tinatawag natin yan, yung crime will not be successful or will not be successful so ayan apprehension or suppression of crime Then, of course, we have the apprehension of offenders. Of course, from the word itself, apprehension by arresting the offenders. Again, by arresting the offenders. So, yan yung trabaho rin ng mga police officers natin. Okay. So, let's move on. Of course, class, aside from that, kapag, uh, ano, hindi kapag kailangan nila, of course, someone aid of SOCO, Okay? So, kapag sa investigation na, kapag medyo in a complicated side na or uh, in legalistic side, of course, kailangan na nila okay, mag-somo ng aid ng SOCO. Ano yung SOCO? Sino the crime operatives. And of course, class, in quest with prosecution. Okay? So, ang mga police officer class, uh, okay, ini-invite yan sila na mga prosecutor class sa opisina nila. Then, doon sa loob, manunumpayan sila class pero manunumpayan sila class kasi nga ang inquest class that is intended only kapag may naaresto sila class na wala silang dala na warrant of arrest again pag sinabi nating inquest uh, proceeding or inquest that is the the procedures or proceeding in court wherein the prosecutor will determine class the validity or legality of arrest For those person class na naaresto without the benefit of warrant of arrest. Ulitin po. Pag sinabi natin in quest proceeding or in quest, it is the proceeding in court. Of course, uh, ginagamit niyan or ang nagkakandak niyan class is the prosecutor rather. Okay? Uh, it is uh, conducted by in quest prosecutor to determine, tatanungin yung police officer whether or not the, uh, yung uh, kinandak niya na arrest or yung pag-aresto na sa tao is legal or illegal. So in other words, ang inquest proceeding, it is the to determine the validity or legality of arrest for those person arrested without the benefit of warrant of arrest. Nakuha niyo? Yan yung tinatawag natin na inquest. Yes, of course, kailangan rin na hindi lang magpas yung tinatawag natin na reglementary period. Of course, class, ang reglementary period natin, thank you, Sir Lemuel, yun yung sunod-sunod natin, yung 12-18-36. Okay, yung 12-18-36. But of course, class, ang reglementary period, in every rule, there is an exemption. Kapag halimbawa, arestohin pa siya sa, okay, naaresto mo siya sa isang isla. Okay, tapos nagkaroon or nagka-high tide or nagbumagyo. Of course, class, pagdating mo, kasi kapag nag-lapse na, yung reglementary period hindi na pwedeng sampahan ng kaso kailangan i-release na yan ng mga police officer pero plus kapag justifiable reason naman na abutan kayo ng baha na abutan kayo ng bagyo okay lang yun class basta ma-justify mo okay yun so again ang reglementary period natin that is 12-18-36 grave light or yung uh, ay yes uh, uh, yung kanatawag natin na graves uh, serious and of course yung kanatawag natin na light offenses so 12-18-36 Okay, kaya di ba palagi kong nakikita Okay, like pag may uh, legal basis naman baka ma-delay sir ilang araw ko kulugin pag ganun. Kapag may ano naman class, may justifiable reason, halimbawa ilang araw naman o ilang araw yung pagbaha o ilang araw yung uh, na-trap sila doon sa isla o hindi naman nakalagay class na specified sa batas. As long as ma-deliver niyo yung tao na yon. Pero kapag sinabi niya na Uh, yung hinuli niya tapos kumain pala sila sa iba't ibang lugar okay, hindi naman yun hindi yun justifiable class okay so hindi na yan siya kasali doon as long as kahit ilang araw yan basta ma-justify niya na hindi talaga o hindi talaga kaya yung uh, tinatawag natin na i-transport yung tao na yun okay so thank you sa mga tanong ninyo Okay, so of course class, ang police class, trabaho din nila to testify in court. So di ba we have two parties in court class. We have the defense party, of course ang defense class that is the, the side of the accused. And the prosecution naman that is the side of the victim. So 
between the defense class and of course yung kanatawag natin na defense and prosecution saan magte-testify ngayon ang police officer between uh, between the two parties Okay, again, between two parties, saan siya? Okay, so tingnan ko yung mga sagot ninyong class. Baka may magkakaiba kayong sagot. What? May tanong ba? Okay, so very good. Okay, so of course, yan yung tanatawag natin na prosecution. Take note class ha. Ang police officer class kapag inibintahan uh, kumbaga in-invite siya sa korte to justify or to testi testify in court class automatically general rule he will testify in favor of the witness or in favor of the prosecution party so big team natin class hindi naman pwedeng police officer ka tapos kakampihan mo yung tanatao na na accused or defense Again, class, general rule, ang police class will testify in court in favor of the prosecution. Nakuha ninyo? So again, in favor of the prosecution. So yan yung palaging uh, tinatawag natin ng general rule in any criminal proceeding. Okay, so nakuha na class. Okay na ba? Okay, so okay na siguro. So let's proceed now on the next. Okay. Sige, of course class, trabaho rin ng mga police officers class to conduct search and seizure. Again, ang trabaho rin nila aside from arrest, inuutusan rin sila class or inaatasan sila to conduct search and seizure. Pag sinabi natin kasing search, of course, uh, hanapin or to look into and seizure naman is to take, pupunin yung mga bagay na nakalagay doon sa search warrant order na na-sign or pinarmahan ni judge ngayon. Tandaan yung class, ang search and seizure yung search warrant tapos dapat nakaspecify yan kung ano na yung pupunin at dadalhin sa korte para makuha yung custody. So yan yung tinatawag natin na to conduct search and seizure. Okay? So yan yung trabaho rin ng police to conduct search and seizure. Okay, so to testify in court to conduct search and seizure. Then of course, to investigate the crime for the protection of lives and property. So trabaho rin yan ng police officer. Then of course, class, pupusin na tayo sa arrest. Pag sinabi natin arrest class, of course, tandaan niyo yung one word na taking. Arrest, pag sinabi natin arrest, that is the taking of person into custody of law that the, uh, he or she may be bound to answer the accusation or any uh, yung mga, mga reklamo laban sa kanya. So yan yung tinatawag natin na arrest. That is the taking of person into custody of law. While ang um, warrant of arrest class, of course, that is an order in writing in the name of the people of the Philippines. Bakit kaya class? Okay, tatanungin ko kayo. Bakit kaya class? Sa mga kaso, hindi nakalagay yung pangalan ng biktima. Ang nakalagay ng doon, ang biktima is people of the Philippines versus Juan de la Cruz. Okay, people of the Philippines before versus Juan de la Cruz. Bakit kaya class? Ano yung logic or ano yung legal source or legal explanation? Bakit hindi na lang ilagay yung pangalan ng biktima? Okay. So, tanda niyo, class. Ang tanda niyo, ganito ha. Okay. Pag salami natin people of the Philippines, tanda niyo, isulat ko na lang dito sa comment section. People of the Philippines. Kaya hindi nila lagay yung pangalan ng victim class kasi si people of the Philippines is considered natin as ROP. Yan yung tinatawag natin na real offended party. Okay. So, the real offended party or the ROPC people of the Philippines. Again, ang people of the Philippines, that is the real offended party. Nakuha? Okay, so yan yung tinatawag natin na 
real offended party. Nakuha niyo. Okay, kasi class, tinawag siya na real offended car party kasi the moment na may nangyaring krimen sa society natin or community, it directly affects all. So lahat tayo na apektuhan, so lahat tayo ibig sabihin magsasuffer. So halimbawa, uh, nagkaroon ng crime of rape sa sa ating bansa. So hindi lang tayo uh, magsasuffer, hindi lang yung mga nasaktan o yung pamilya ng biktima ang uh, magsasuffer class. Lahat tayo at directly affects all. So that's why ang nakalagay palagi is people of the Philippines versus para ma-justify class na tayo ang kalaban ng tinatawag natin na akusado. Kasi again, people of the Philippines is considered as the real offended party. Okay. So again, ang uh, tinatawag natin na people of the Philippines that is the ROP or the real offended party. So aside from that class, ang warrant of arrest ini-evaluate yan ni judge class. Okay, si judge mismo yung ang mag-evaluate class. Kapag nakita niya ngayon ng probable cause, of course, mag-issue mag siya ng warrant o arrest. Kapag hindi naman, i-dismiss niya yung kaso class. Kapag nakita niya, of course, mag-lalabas siya ngayon ng warrant o arrest uh, directed to the peace officer or arresting officer class para uh, sabihan siya or utusan to arrest that person. Then of course, para dalhin siya doon sa sa korte para makuha yung ating custody sa tao na yon. So again, ang arrest class, that is the taking of person in the custody of law that he or she may be bound to answer the accusation filed against him or her. So taking lang yung tanda ninyo. Paano natin in-execute yung arrest? Of course, by actual restraint. Then pag sinabi natin warrant of arrest, that is an order in writing in the name of the people of the Philippines. Okay? So, ayan yung tinatawag natin na order in writing in the name of the people of the Philippines. Again, sinasabi natin that uh, people of the Philippines is the real offended uh, party. Okay? So, ano po yung person immune from arrest? Okay, yung mga person immune from the arrest class, of course, mat matatakil natin yan sa book 1. Okay, alam mo, yung mga head of states and mga ambassadors and so on. So, madidiscuss natin yan sa book 1. Ibig sabihin, they are immune. They are not allowed to be arrested whenever they committed a crime under our territory. So, hindi sila pwedeng arrestohin, hindi sila pwedeng hulihin kung, kung sa atin dito sa ating mansa. Okay, so yan. Okay, so ang question natin dito, so okay, on the comment section, what is the lifespan of the warrant of arrest? Again, what is the lifespan of warrant of arrest? Lahat pa sumagot, yung 34. What is the lifespan of the warrant? Okay, pa, let's answer this one. Okay, so lifetime, sir. Okay, very good class. Huwag kayo malito ha. Ang lifetime, o yung lifetime, yung lifespan class, o yung tanatawag natin na validity of warrant of arrest. Of course, ang sabot natin dyan, very good, that is lifetime. Okay, ganito yung class. Kapag hindi nakuli yung tanatawag natin na tao na nakalagay doon sa warrant of arrest, so failure yung tanatawag na police officer. Ang mangyayari yan, Papunta lang siya ngayon sa sa korte o pupunta lang siya kay judge. Judge, kaya ito hindi ko nahuli kasi nakatakas o pumunta sa ibang bansa. So ano yung gagawin ko, judge? Okay, gumawa ka ng justification letter. I-justify mo bakit hindi mo nahuli yung tao na yan. Kung uh, hindi mo nahuli yung tao na yan, yung uh, warrant of arrest na yon it will serve as a bench warrant or a standing warrant class. Anytime, kapag makita mo yung tao na yon pwede siyang maaresto kasi nga ang validity of warrant of arrest is lifetime. So again, yung uh, warrant of arrest na yun, it will serve as a standing warrant or bench warrant. Anytime, pwede na yung kunin. Kapag in-arrest or nakita mo yung tao na nandito na, halimbawa, pumunta sa 
pumunta sa ibang bansa, then bumalik na siya sa Pilipinas, then kapag nakita mo siya class, pwede mo na siyang arrestuhin. Kasi again, yan yung tinatawag natin na validity of the search wa or the warrant of arrest rather class is lifetime or yung tinatawag natin na lifespan of the warrant of arrest. Nakuha niyo? Nakuha ba class? Okay, so I hope it's clear. Okay. Okay, next tayo. Okay, thank you. So next, how about naman class ang execution of warrant of arrest? Ano naman or yung tinatawag natin na execution of warrant of arrest? Ilang days naman yan class? So lahat sumagot. Okay, so ayan. Okay, so of course, class, ang execution, of course, within 10 days. Okay, ang sagot natin dyan, that is, within 10 days from its receipt. Okay, within 10 days, class, from its receipt, yung na, na doon na hawak na ng arresting officer, yung warrant of arrest na nagaling kay judge, of course, that is the execution of warrant of arrest. Again, yan yung tinatawag natin, sorry, the execution of the warrant of arrest. Take note. Okay. So, ito yung mga possible crimes class na makumit ng mga po, uh, police officer class while conducting an arrest. Again, ito yung mga possible crimes na pwedeng makumit ng uh, police officer class while conducting an arrest. Of course, uh, number one dyan, delay in the delivery of detained person to the proper judicial authorities. Again, Delay in the delivery of detained person to the proper judicial authorities. Ibig sabihin, uh, may marami mong pinuntahan. Hindi nasunod yung tanatawag natin na regulatory period. So, pwede siya ngayong kasapaan class ng delay in the delivery of detained person to the proper judicial authorities. Then, of course, unlawful arrest. Ang tanatawag natin na unlawful arrest, ibig sabihin yun class, the person... Okay, has no authority or has no legal rights to effect an arrest. Okay, in 10 days, it is must uh, take return. And then, si uh, Ambro din. Okay, kapag uh, after 10 days of first class, pupunta na siya sa korte. It will serve as a standing warrant na yun. Okay, pupunta na siya doon. I-justify niya kung bakit hindi niya nahuli. Kasi nga, lifetime na yun, class. Magiging lifetime na. Then again, of course, ang unlawful arrest class, the person arrested or the person executing an arrest has no legal means or yung tanatawag natin na no authority class to effect an arrest or to conduct an arrest. So yan yung tanatawag natin na unlawful arrest. Pag sinabi naman natin expulsion, okay, pag sinabi natin expulsion, tanda nyo pa sa, ang expulsion class when a public officer or employee compels someone to change his or her residence, that is also known as the expulsion. Again, pag sinabi natin expulsion, okay. Uh, pagka 10 days pa na huli, sir, tapos malayo, i-justify lang din, sir. Pagka 10 days. So, yes, of course, class. Kasi standing warrant na yun, eh. Anytime na, kapag nahuli mo, kapag halimbawa, within 10 days kasi nakalagay, kapag 10 days mo siya nakita, pwede mo siyang arestuhin pa rin. Kasi nga, uh, nalagay na doon sa judge, standing warrant na yon Anytime, pwede mo siyang kunin or pwede mo siyang arestuhin. Kasi nga, meron na siyang existing warrant doon na nakabindin. Okay? So, ganun ka sa... So, basta more than ano, pwede na yung tatawagin. Mm -hmm. uh, from the moment tapos ng 10 days, tapos hindi pa rin nag-report si police officer sa court case or tapos may reason si police officer o babalid ba yun as an excuse. Yes, class. As long as ma-justify niya, class. But then again, kapag uh, 
within 10 days class na hindi nakapag-report si police officer. So alam na yun ni judge na hindi yan na-execute yung tinatawag natin na warrant of arrest. But then again, bawa, nahuli niya talaga pero natagalan niya lang dinala doon sa police officer ay yung sa kay judge. Uh, nahuli niya pero sumobra sa 10 days. Tapos may justifiable reason siya. Okay lang na yun yun. In every rule class, there is an exemption naman. Pwedeng-pwede yun. Okay? So again, in every rule, there is an exemption. As long as tayo niyang i-explain kung bakit ganon, so okay lang yun. So again, yun yung tinatawag natin na okay, sa, sa arrest. Again, class, pag sinabi natin yung expulsion, tanda niyo when you compel someone to change uh, his or her residence, halimbawa, you are a uh, barangay captain, pinalis mo yung isang pamilya, sabi mo umalis kayo dito sa, sa barangay ko, okay, hindi kayo welcome dito, okay, pero wala naman siya pinangahawakan na tinatawag natin na, ano, na legal grounds or wala siyang binigay o wala siyang hawak na court order. So pwede ba 'yon? Hindi pwede. So ang sag ang uh, crime na na-commit natin na class is what we call expulsion. When you compel someone to change his or her residence, 'yan yung tinatawag natin na expulsion. How about naman class kapag yung private person ang nagpaalis sa iyo sa bahay na 'yan or sa lugar na 'yon without the legal grounds. Wala siyang uh, dalang court order, wala siyang uh, wala siyang legal basis sa pagpapalis sa inyo, tapos basta-basta niya na lang kayo pinales. Ano yung magiging uh, crime o magiging pa, ano yun, yung tanatawag natin? Okay, so very good. So ang sagot natin dyan, that is grave coercion. Okay? So ang sagot natin dyan, class, that is grave coercion. Kasi di ba ang grave coercion, pinapagawa sa iyo yung mga bagay na against your will, okay, na ayaw mo, so yan yung tanatawag natin, na grave coercion. Okay? Nakuha ba? Okay. So, Pero ayan. kapindiran na, sir. Private person. Okay? Private person class kapag sa grave coercion na. Kasi sa expulsion, public na. Okay? Public officer employee class ang expulsion. Sa grave coercion class, that is private person. Na pinipilit ka na gawin mo yung bagay na to uh, against your will. Wala silang uh, court order wala silang legal grounds that is grave coercion. Take note, kapag public officer employee yung uh, nag-compel sa iyo, uh, nagawin yung mga bagay na against your will without basis, that is expulsion or you compel someone to change his or her residence, that is expulsion. Okay. So I hope it's clear. Okay, of course class, don't worry. Pupunta pa rin tayo sa book to. Don't ko explain Okay, so doon ko explain yung mga different crimes kasi uh, PCGS pa tayo. Paano ba papatunayan kung sakali, sir? Na no? Okay, kapag ano, class? Of course, pinalis kayo, class. I-ano mo lang yan? I-inaras uh, kayo. So, i-justify mo lang yan sa korte na pinapalis kayo sa lugar na to na wala namang legal basis. Wala namang pinakita ano, si mayor. Wala namang pinakita si, si kapitan or walang uh, court order na ganito. So as long as ma-justify ninyo class na uh, naharas kayo, okay? Na pinapagawa yung bagay na to na against your will or it is not uh, illegal naman, okay? Illegal yung pagpapalis nila sa inyo. So that is justifiable. Okay, so dito tayo ngayon class sa tinatawag natin na search warrant. So tanda niyo class, ang search warrant of course that is still an order in writing in the name of the people of the Philippines. Of course, uh, pinipirmahan rin yan ang judge class directing to uh, search, okay? Karang recommending him class to search for uh, any personal or yung tatawag natin na uh, nakalagay doon sa search one. Okay, ano yung subject class? O ano yung dalawang tinatawag natin na property? Okay, under the law. Ano yung tawag natin? Ano yung tinatawag natin ng dalawang property class? Again, under the law, what are the two types of properties? Kung meron kayong ano? Okay, so pag sinabi natin uh, uh, search warrant, so ayan ano yung tawag natin? Okay, so very good. Real and personal property. So saan nyo natutunan yung real and personal property class?
Okay. Okay, sa video. Okay, very good. So, mabuti pala. Maraming impact yung video ko. So, again, class, so, tandaan ninyo, so, the real property and the personal property. So, take note ng real property. Those properties are not transferable. Halimbawa, yung bahay, yung lupa. So, hindi mo yan matatransfer at hindi mo yan pwedeng dalhin sa korte. Sorry. So, ang subject ng search warrant class is yung tinatawag natin na personal property. Pag sinabi natin personal property, ibig sabihin, Oh, sorry. Those properties are transferable. So again, ang real properties, those properties are not transferable from one place to another. While the personal property, of course, that is transferable. Okay. Of course, and about yung laptop, cell phone. Okay. So yan yung kanatawag natin na personal property. Okay. Nakuha ba? Okay na class? Yes, coach. Okay, next slide. Okay. Okay, so of course class, uh, kapag uh, ano natin yan, uh, we will go to detail. Pag sinabi natin search, of course, the act uh, of looking into carefully, yung titignan natin carefully. Ang seizure naman is to take something into custody of law. Kapag nakuha natin na ba, yung laptop, nakuha natin yung cellphone, ibig sabihin kapag nasa korte na yan, nasa custody yan na yan class, nang tinatawag natin na court. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng search and seizure. Okay? So search and seizure. Okay, next. Okay, kung, uh, kung uh, nga ano natin class, ang execution ng uh, warrant of arrest. Okay? So how about naman class? sa tinatawag natin na search warrant, kailan natin sineserve ang search warrant? Again, kailan natin sineserve ang search warrant? Okay, so kailan natin or when to serve a search warrant? Daytime. Okay, so very good. Uh, bakit may na, na, nakita ko anytime? Okay, so ayan. So ang uh, search warrant class, tanda niyo class ha, kailan sineserve ang warrant of arrest? Anytime of the day or night. While ang uh, search warrant class, general rule, sineserve yan class during... Daytime. Again, ang, warrant of, ay, ang search warrant class, sineserve yan, general rule, uh, daytime. But of course, in every rule, there's an exemption. Pwede nga serve ang search warrant class kapag gabi. But of course, please make sure na merong court order. Again, ang, ang warrant of arrest class, sineserve yan any time of the day or night, whether it is Sunday, whether it is, uh, whether it is holiday, whether it is monthsary, or so on. So, walang pinipili, pinipiling oras class ang warrant of arrest. It, it should be served any time of the day or night. While ang uh, search warrant class, automatically, or general rule, sinabi ng batas natin, it will only be served during day time. Again, ang search warrant, sineserve lang yan during day time. Okay, nakuha niyo Then of course, let's proceed now on the next question. Okay, so ano naman class ang lifespan ng warrant of arrest? Again, ano naman yung lifespan? Uh, yes, Nasim? Sir, tanong ko lang po. Yes? Ano sa, sa, daytime, sa daytime po ba, pag example po, around, uh, ang consider po bang daytime is prang, pag nakita na yung araw or AM, mismo parang one, like madaling araw, pwede na. Ay, uh, ano, Ang general rule natin class, of course, kapag uh, 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 ito, daytime, of course, nasa, ano na yan, nasa 7 a.m. hanggang sa before mag-takip siling. Ay, takip siling, of course, uh, before mag-6 p.m. So, yan yung tanatawag natin na daytime. Ibig sabihin, meron pang ano, nakikita pa. Basta wag na pag-abuti ng gabi ka sa daytime yan. Okay. Sir, paano kaya pag tumakas sa gabi? Sa gabi na. Okay, yung, ang ano yun lang class, yung sunrise and sunset, tama yun. Okay, daytime. Basta daytime class ha. Okay, so yun yung tanatawag natin na uh, daytime. Sir, paano kaya pag tumakas sa gabi na sir? Uh, any class, of course, nga sinabi ko, in every rule, there is an exemption. 
pwede namang gawin or pwede namang i-execute class or i-serve ang search warrant during night time. But general rule, daytime yan class. Okay? A night time class kapag okay, night time class of course kapag hindi natin ma-aresto or hindi natin talaga ma-execute yung tinatawag natin na search warrant. But again, uh, please make sure sa search warrant class, dapat okay, merong court order na nanggaling sa judge. Uh, Nag-shopee ba ako? Uh, wait lang natin nang ko muna. Okay. Okay, so again, so again, pag sinabi natin uh, when to serve search warrant, that is daytime. Okay, so daytime class, uh, any, uh, but uh, that is the general rule. Okay na ba yung bosses ko class or hindi pa? Unstable kasi yung internet. Eh. Don't worry class. Okay, don't worry kapag umuwi ako sa Jensen, magkakaroon tayo, uh, hahabulin hahab natin lahat ng subject na ano natin. Okay, sige. Then of course, another question class, what is the lifespan naman or validity ng search warrant natin? What is the lifespan or the validity of search warrant? Please answer on the comment section. Okay, so what is the validity of search warrant? Okay. So of course class, uh, pag sinabi natin uh, search warrant, Okay, ang validity niya lang class within 10 days from its date. Okay? Well, um, that is 10 days or within 10 days from its date. So, anong mangyayari class after the lapse na or halimbawa, sumobra na sa 10 days? Anong mangyayari class kapag gusto mo pa ulit kumuha ng search warrant? Okay. So, again... Uh, ano ano mangyayari class kapag naglapse na or within 10 days hindi mo pa na execute ang search warrant order na binigay ng korte na dapat mo execute ano mangyayari doon Ano mangyayari Okay of course class pwede kang kumuha ulit delay the delivery Okay, of course class, uh, pwede kang kumuha ulit class, okay? So of course, uh, it will already be declared void, okay? So hindi na yun siya pwede magamit. So halimbawa, kapag gusto mong uh, ano ulit, so mag-release ulit class yung judge natin, okay? Pwede kang mag-request ng another search warrant. Okay, very good. So yun na, kasi nga yung search warrant na binigay sa iyo, that is already considered void under our criminal procedure. Okay, so I hope uh, nakuha niyo yung kaibahan ng uh, uh, search warrant and of course the warrant of arrest. Yung validity niya and of course uh, pwede ba yan mag-search everyday sir basta within 10 days? Yes naman. Within 10 days class pwede ka mag-search as long as um, yung uh, ano mo, yung mga nakalagay doon na uh, hindi mo pa nakukuha. Ibig sabihin hindi mo naaaktuhan. So pwede ka mag-search class. Okay, basta within 10 days na sana execute mo na yung search warrant. Okay? So within 10 days. But make sure class, hindi ka pwedeng mag-arresto, ay hindi ka pwedeng mag-search doon class kapag walang uh, witness. Okay? But of course class, uh, imposible naman yung araw-araw ko yung araw-araw ka mag-search. Uh, ang ano talaga class, ang pinaka ang nangyayari sa real McCoy, once lang. Okay? Once lang talaga, once pumasok ka doon, dapat make sure mo na merong witness yung person or two or more person residing or two person residing in the same locality. Halimbawa, kasama mo si Barangay Captain. Kasama mo rin si Treasurer. So, may, uh, yan yung tinatawag natin na search warrant. Actually, class, ang nangyayari, once nang talaga. Okay. So, again, at least two person. Very good, Judith. Person residing in the same places. But of course, class, please make sure hindi minor. Ha? Kung ang kasama ninyo during the conduct of search warrant. Kasi baka ma-technical kayo. Okay? So, ganun ka sa, so, ayan. Dapat legal age. Of course, dapat alam nyo na or uh, alam nyo na yung capacity kung ano yung ginagawa, ginagawa ninyo. Hindi naman yung, uh, kasi ma-technical ka class, patay ka talaga. So, yun. Yung tinatawag natin na search warrant. Okay. So, dito naman tayo. Okay. So, what is the main goal of criminal justice system? 
Okay, uh, it is necessary sir na public of, uh, official. Hindi naman kailangan class. Basta uh, at least two person residing in the same locality. But of course, uh, added points yan or added integrity kapag yung mga public official or employee na available within that area. Okay, well, pwedeng private class, pwedeng public. Okay, okay lang yan class. Whether public or whether public. But, uh, whether private, sorry, or public. So as long as uh, nasa tamang idan sila class or kaya na nilang, uh, okay, so... Ibig sabihin, ang paalam ka sa kanila or present sila anytime, pwede silang mag-testify kung ano man ang mangyari. So, ganun ka sa whether you are public or private person. Okay, pwede, pwede kang sumama. Okay, dito tayo. What is the main goal of criminal justice system? Okay, what is the main goal of the criminal justice uh, system? Okay, so what is the main goal of the criminal justice system? Okay, so let's proceed now. Okay, ang sagot natin dyan is uh, of course that is crime prevention. Okay, saan nyo nakuha yung sagot ninyo class? Bakit na tama yung mga sagot ninyo? Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan is crime prevention. Nabasa nyo na ba to? Nabasa nyo na? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Okay, so very good. So yan ang sagot natin that is crime prevention. Okay, so crime prevention class that is the main goal of the criminal justice system. Of course, uh, basically, the role of the police class in the society is the crime prevention, which is also considered class as the main goal of the criminal justice system or the crime prevention. Kaya kung titignan ninyo class, hindi ako nagpapasagot sa mga tanong na walang source. Dapat every question meron niya pinanggalingan kung bakit ganyan ang tanong or bakit ganyan yung sagot natin. So again, the main goal of the criminal justice system is basically crime prevention. Okay, so yan. Okay, next naman. Hmm. Okay, so dito kay class at tinatawag natin na criminal investigation. Kasi kung titingnan ninyo class, ang CGS, very broad. Actually, ang kanyang topic or yung kanyang coverage. Kasi di ba, matatalakay natin si police. Leia yung police, di ba? Of course, matatalakay natin yung investigation, si prosecution, sa court. Okay? Matatalakay din natin class yung uh, correction, which is sa court naman. So, ganun kaganda ang CGS class. So, actually class ang CGS, kaya nga inuna ko to para mabigyan na kayo ng overall view or general view ng mga subject sa board exam. Kasi uh, actually class, uh, hindi man lahat in detail, but then again, mata na talaga. Medyo, ano, madadaan natin yung konti yung ibang area. Okay, so tanda niyo class, under the criminal investigation, pag sinabi natin criminal investigation class, nakafocus yung investigation na yan sa person or sa tao. So tanda niyo lang yung ILP. Ang I, that stands for identify. Yung L, that stands to locate. And of course, yung P, to provide evidence for the guilt of the criminal, of the person in a criminal proceeding. Again, we have the criminal investigation class, Yan yung ILP to identify, to locate, and provide evidence for the guilt of the person in a criminal proceeding. Then, uh, then we have the admission versus confession. So ano nga ba ang kaibahan ni admission class kay confession? So ano yung admission class? On the comment section, so ano yung tinatawag natin na admission? Admission muna, admission. Okay, so what is admission on the call? Okay, so let's answer. 
Okay, so again, tandaan niyo. Okay, admission. Ha, okay, how about naman class ang confession? Okay, so may nakita mo mga maling sagot, may nakita rin akong tama. How about confession? What is confession? Okay, so ganito class. Okay, tandaan niyo, ganito lang kasimple ah. Pag sinabi nating admission, of course, that is the direct or acknowledgement of facts. While ang confession class, that is acknowledgement of guilt. Tandaan niyo class, whether it is the statement of facts, whether statement of uh, guilt, isa lang yan sila. So again, ang acknowledgement of facts, kapag nakafocus lang sa facts, that is admission, ang confession naman, that is admission or acknowledgement of Gil, ulitin ko. Ang admission, that is acknowledgement of facts. Ang uh, confession, that is acknowledgement of guilt. Okay? So, I hope it's clear. So, yan yung admission versus confession. Nakuha na? Nakuha na, class? Okay. So, ayan. Okay, next. Okay, so we have the three tools of investigation class. So ano yung, ano yung mga three tools of investigation? Of course, class, we have the witness. Second naman, we have the interrogation. Third, we have the instrumentation. Okay, so yan class, yung three tools of investigation class. Okay, magtatanong ako class, then sasagutin ninyo sa comment, uh, comment section. Okay, so it is the forceful questioning. Sir, may I ask if this two must be exclusive in four? Okay. So, yung, uh, yung course class, yung uh, admission and confession sa ano natin yan, sa, sa korte. Of course, walang ano yan, walang, um, walang bearing pagdating sa administrative or uh, yung mga tinatawag na din na quasi-judicial bodies. Okay. So, yun na. So, doon lang yan applicable sa, sa court natin. Okay. So, of course, meron tayong mga extrajudicial confession. And of course, yung judicial confession. Okay, mag-ano mag, ako dito, class. Magtatanong ako din, sasagutin ninyo. Okay, it is the forceful questioning of a person. Okay, it is the forceful questioning of a person who witnessed the commission of the crime. Again, correct. It is a tool of investigation wherein it is the forceful questioning of a person who witnessed the commission of the crime. Okay, what is your answer? Okay, may sumagot ng interrogation, may sumagot ng interview. Dito na talaga nagkakatalo class. Kung uh, you are very particular, pero parang hindi ah. Marami pa talaga tayong maayusin sa inyo. Okay, so ayan, sinabi ko, it is the forceful questioning of a person who witnessed the commission of the crime. Ang sagot natin dyan, class, is interview. Again, ang sagot natin dyan is interview. Okay, again, dito tayo. Okay, so wag kayo mag-base doon sa mga forceful questioning, complicated questioning, and cooperative questioning and so on mag-focus kayo class ganito ang interview class ginagamit lang yan sa tinatawag natin na witness again ang uh, interview ginagamit lang yan sa tinatawag natin na witness while ang interrogation class ginagamit lang yan sa suspect hindi naman natin pwedeng interrogate si witness or si victim kasi nga di ba victim siya or witness nakuha niyo yung point 
Then of course, ang instrumentation, ginagamitan natin ng criminalistic science class to explain or to study yung uh, bakit nangyayari yung criminality. Again, again and again, ito yung common mistake ng mga students na nagtitake ng board exam. Konting twist lang ng question, mali na agad or mag-iiba na yung sagot niya. Pag sinama natin interview class, again, it talks about only or it is only intended for witness. While ang interrogation class, that is only intended for source effect. Okay? So that's why uh, be particular with that. Okay? Then of course, ang instrumentation, that is the use of criminalistic science class to explain why the criminality or yung tinatawag natin, bakit nangyayari yung criminality natin. Okay? So yun yung instrumentation. Nakuha ninyo? May mga violent reaction ba kayo, class? Okay, so may mga violent reaction ba kayo dyan sa sinabi ko? Wala po, sir. Okay, so ayan na. So dapat na-clear na yan. Uh, kung ano yung tinuro sa inyo ng college na mali, okay, so hindi ko naman sinabi yung mali, ah. uh, baka nag, uh, ano lang, nag, hindi lang very specific yung pagturo sa inyo. So dapat ngayon, do not focus doon sa mga tinatawag natin na mga, ano, mga adjective words na ginagamit. Focus kayo. Kung ano mismo ang gamit ng term na yan or yung tinatawag na topic na yan. Kasi dyan pa pa sa class yung tinatawag natin na comprehension. Okay, ibig sabihin na intindihan mo yung nababasa mo or nakikita mo at ini-explain natin. Okay, so yan. Okay, so of course, actually class uh, dito sa ano, sa Bicol. Okay, sa Bicol kasi dito ako ngayon sa Bicol. So of course, uh, nag-spend sila ng, uh, okay, di ba ang mahal ng ticket ngayon, lahat ng uh, accommodation and so on. So ako yung first nila na speaker, kaka-start ng nila, actually mas advanced kayo sa kanila eh. So uh, sa criminal law. So of course, ma medyo proud ako na advanced kayo sa kanila kasi kaka-start lang nila sa ibang area rin. Pero tinitingnan ko, hindi pa talaga sila ready. Parang mga bago, yung mga dinidiscuss ko bago sa kanila lahat. So, I hope, uh, ano lang yan ha, kahit online tayo class, dapat ang lahat ng participants or yung naka-enroll sa akin, 100% of course, uh, ready na kayo. Then of course, class, uh, mayroon tayong final coaching kapag malapit na yung board exam. Sa January na yun. Okay? So, mayroon tayo, magkakaroon tayo ng final coaching. Okay, so meron tayong tinatawag na eyes of investigation class. So ang gagawin niyo sa eyes of investigation, ikakapi niyo lang ngayon si interview, interrogation, instrumentation at ano yung idadagdag niyo class? Again, para maging eyes of investigation siya. Ano yung idadagdag niyo? Okay, so uh, information. Okay, so ang sagot natin diyan Idadagtag natin ngayon class si information. Tandaan niyo si information class, it is considered as the blood life or the blood line of any investigative process or any investigation. So meaning, kapag walang uh, na-record class, uh, it's very important yung records kapag ano ba, sa police or any law enforcement agencies. Kala, kasi dyan ang base kung ano yung mga progress class. Kasi kapag hindi yung na-record yan class, So hindi natin ma-determine or hindi natin ma mag gauge kung ano yung tinatawag natin na susunod nating mga akba. Kasi ang information it is considered as the blood life or the blood line or, or the blood line, yan yung bumubuhay actually class sa any investigation. Okay? Kasi nga kailangan lahat ng akbang i-record ire yan kasi malalaman natin kung ano yung mga next project or next progress rather na dapat pagtunan ng pansin. So that is information, the blood line, or the blood line of any investigative process. Okay. So dito tayo class. So ito dito tayo mag-end class before ngayong gabi. Then of course bukas, um, okay, so I will make sure pa rin or mag-meet mag pa rin tayo class. Okay, sir. Sir, kung sakali sa tatlo, Uh, sa question, tanong tatlo lang, indicate pa ba natin si information? Uh, hindi naman, class. Uh, hindi naman yan mag magagawin na tatlo lang. Isasama pa rin nila yan si information. Of course, sa choices, ano ba ba? The following are the eyes of investigation except, of course, kapag uh, inumit nila or hindi nila sinama yung isa, of course, uh, 
isasagot mo yung uh, familiar lang sa yung yung pinakamalapit. Okay, so yun na. So again, uh, interview, interrogation, instrumentation, and information that is what you call the eyes of investigation. Okay, so ayan na, hindi, uh, ganun. Okay, so pag sinabi kasi nating investigation class, tanda ninyo, pag sinabi nating investigation, it is the uh, systematic study of facts concerning the commission of a crime. So saan nang galing yung tinatawag natin na term na investigation? Saan ba siya nang galing class? Of course class, nang galing yung tinatawag natin na term na investigation sa tinatawag natin na Latin term na investigare, yung naka-green class, that is investigare, which means to trace or to locate. Again, yung investigation class, it came from the Latin term investigare, which means to trace or to locate. Sino ngayon yung tinetrace natin class or nilalocate under investigation? Pakilagay nga sa comment section. Again, sino yung tinetrace natin or nilalocate natin under the uh, investigation? Hmm, sige. Okay, so very good. So ang tinetrace natin class or inolocate natin class, of course, that is uh, what we call, uh, bakit may mga perfect pay for? Okay, so ang sagot natin dyan class, that is, okay, that is to locate, of course, yung kinaroonan or kung sino yung suspect that is known today class as the persons of interest or yung tinatawag natin na POI. So yan siya yung nilolocate natin class. So that's why nagkakaroon tayo ngayon ng investigation. Ibig sabihin, to trace or to locate the suspect that is known today as the persons of interest or the POI. Okay, while ang crime investigation class, tandaan nyo lang yung term na GOF, naka-base na ngayon sa tinatawag natin na gathering of facts concerning the commission of the crime. Again, Ang uh, crime investigation, tandaan nyo lang yung GOF. That is the gathering of facts concerning the commission of the crime. Okay? So kasi nga ang focus ng crime investigation, of course, yung krimen mismo. Okay? Yung crime mismo. Kaya nagkakaroon ng gathering of facts concerning the commission of the crime. Okay? But of course, explain natin. Okay, dito tayo mag end class sa uh, ating uh, discussion. Okay, while ang criminal investigation ta sa, ang criminal investigation, nakapokus yan sa tinatawag natin na person. Sir, pwede po ba mag-address ng question before the end of the class? Yes naman, pwede kayong mag maglagay ng tanong nyo sa comment section. Okay, so ang question natin, it means that the crime was actually perpetrated. Again, it means that the crime was actually perpetrated, letter A, proof, letter B, evidence, letter C, physical evidence, and letter D, corpus delicti. Okay, what is your answer on the comment section? Tinitingnan natin. Okay, sige. Let's answer. Okay, so pag sinabi natin uh, it means that the crime was actually perpetrated, of course, that is also known as the corpus delicti. Ang uh, literal uh, talaga class na definition ng tanatawag natin na corpus delicti o yung tanatawag natin na body of the crime. So again, pag sinabi natin corpus delicti, that is the body of the crime. Of course, ang definition ng corpus delicti or body of the crime, it uh, proves or it means that the crime was actually perpetrated or was actually committed. Then of course, pag sinabi natin kasi class na proof, it is the result of the evidence. Kaya di ba kapag may mga evidensya tayo, okay, so yan yung tanatawag natin na proof class. It is the result of the evidence. 
Then, pag sinabi nating evidence class, of course, it is the means uh, sanction by the rules of court. Uh, Pag-uusapan na natin yan on our next uh, meetings or on our next discussion. Again, ang evidence, that is, uh, it is the means sanction by the rules of court. Of course, uh, ascertaining in a judicial proceeding, of course, yung mga matters or manners respecting a matter of facts. Of course, doon yun na mga marirealize yan ma sa ating uh, evidence na subject area. And of course, ang physical evidence, tandaan niyo ang physical evidence that is a, uh, any object, uh, materials, articles, or substances na nangyayari or nakikita niyo sa crime scene or matatagpuan niyo sa crime scene that is considered now class as a physical evidence. Tanda niyo class, ang physical evidence, kinagamit lang yan kapag ang subject niyo is, uh, of course, yung uh, CDI or the forensic science. Ang ginagamit na term kapag pagdating niyo sa criminal law is yung tinatawag natin na object or real or autopic preference. Again, ang ginagamit na term sa sa criminal law is object or yung tinatawag din natin na real or yung tinatawag natin na autopic preference. Pag sinabi nating uh, physical evidence, yan yung ginagamit na yung class na kapag ang subject mo is criminalistic o ay uh, forensic science or what we call the uh, criminal detection investigation or CDI. Okay. So, uh, sir, what is the uh, strongest evidence mo? Kapag sa evidence class, of course, yan yung object pa rin. Okay? Object pa rin ang pinaka binibigyan okay, ng halaga kasi di ba ang object that is addressed to the census of court. So siya pa rin yung pinakamataas. Kaso ng class, uh, kapag pag-uusapan natin yung evidence, okay, di ba advance na tayo? So of course, ang kasunod sa object, papasok niya ngayon yung tinatawag natin na testimonial. Then of course, ang pinakalist or pinakalas is yung tinatawag natin na documentary kasi ang documentary class pwedeng mabawasan Pwedeng ma-alter, pwedeng madagdagan yung tinatawag na ganang documentary evidence. That wa, that's why it is the least priority in all courses. Uh, Coach, can you differentiate the kinds of due process? Okay, so yung mga tanong ninyong class, uh, i-reserve na yan sa criminal procedure. Ang subject natin ngayon is CGS. So hindi ko ba yan pwedeng i-tackle class kasi nga ang focus natin is CGS. Yung due process class, actually na-explain ko na yan sa, sa, sa video natin. Kung nagmamadali kayo, pwede nyo yun uh, balikan. Pero again, naka-reserve yun class sa ating next na, na topics. Kasi uh, ano pa lang, na, natapos na natin is uh, book 1. Then CGS, magkasunod yan is uh, procedure. Ang mga due process, uh, doon yan class naka-intended or doon yan uh, natin pag-uusapan sa uh, procedure sa criminal procedure para hindi maghalo-halo yung uh, dinidiscuss natin class. So focus muna tayo sa CGS. After na CGS class, pupunta tayo sa criminal procedure, then evidence ang oh, yeah, oh, ano yan? Ang last natin na i-discuss class is yung tinatawag natin na uh, bukto kasi ang bukto yung pinakamarami. Okay? So hintayin niyo lang kasi sa criminal procedure yung mga mga procedural due process, mga substantive due process, and so on. So, doon natin yung i-discuss. Okay. So, ayan. Okay. So, uh, so i-end muna natin yung discussion natin, class. So, see you again uh, tomorrow. So, yung mga question ninyong class, ha, uh, hindi ko muna sasagutin kasi merong... Uh, uh, meron tayong allotted uh, subject for that so para doon na natin i-address. Okay, so thank you. Uh, may nakuha ba kayo ngayong gabi? Marami po, sir. Okay. Marami, sir. Okay, so bukas class, ha, tapusin natin yung ano. Actually, nasa ano pa lang tayo, dalawang component. Pag matapos natin ang lahat ng component ng PCGS class, ready-ready na kayo sa ibang area. Okay? So, sige lang. Uh, I will... Uh, make sure na matapos natin bukas, okay? Ang CGS, kung hindi man natin matapos, of course, class, okay lang yun. Kasi nga, di ba, nasa quality tayo. Okay? Nasa quality ang kailangan natin. Kasi again, sa final coaching, doon ko na naman lahat isummarize yan. Okay? So, para ready-ready kayo pagdating ng board exam. Okay? So, anong oras na? 8.30. So, makikita na naman tayo bukas, ha? Okay. So, 
uh, hintayin niyo ng class yung live baka uh, ano medyo ano kasi dito 